All right, folks, here's the engine I went and picked up. Uh, it's actually in really good shape. It's not stuck. Uh, I have no doubt it would run pretty pretty easy. It's an a AB Farquhar, uh, and they sold these under the Ajax name. So it's got Ajax cast in it, but it's got an AB Farquhar tag. And I've got another one that's just like it, except bigger. This is only five and a half inch bore, eight inch stroke. This is a small engine. And you can see greenish blue paint on it, which is kind of surprising. I'm going to probably, that tag is going there with screws. So I'll pull that tag and hopefully we'll have some good paint underneath of it. Cause that looks original and uh, I'm betting it is. So we got an extra flywheel over there that wasn't ever on it. And we've got a belt pulley and we got another flywheel here that's just laying inside of it. But that one's got curved spoke. That's a nice one. I got some governors too, I'll show you. Oh, also I got a, another Worthington steam pump uh, or feed water pump. Don't have a clue if it's any good or what. I bought it really cheap. A buddy of mine went and picked it up for me. It's capped off there. So we're gonna find out if it's good or not. And uh, Cause I really need one for that boiler. I'd love to get one hooked up on it. So we'll see how this one does. And this is, like I said, this is a pretty good size one. Uh, bigger than the other little the little Worthington I got, but about half the size of the one that came with the Bates engine. Okay, so we picked up three governors. Uh, this is a two-inch Pickering. I think, uh, let me see, it's not a Ball Ranger uh, governor, but I think the mounting on this, uh, it's my understanding, this is a two-inch, but I think it's uh, Peerless. Uh, a friend of mine collects Peerless, and he said that's, he thinks that's what it is, so we'll do some more checking and see. It's got a tag on it, but it just says uh, uh, Pickering Governor. It don't say anything about what it, application it was. Uh, this one, well, let's come back to it. Another Pickering, inch and a quarter, parts governor. I don't think it's going to be any good, but I mean, there's, I'm thinking I've got another one that I need these pieces for, the gears. And uh, one of the gears is missing, I think, but I'm hoping that's going to work out. Uh, the springs are good on it. You know, you don't find that very often in good shape, so. Most of the time they're broke. Uh, they're in good shape on this one also. So all of these uh, grease cups, uh, which you put grease in them and then you tighten them down and it forces the grease in. All of these was a package deal with the steam engine. Now that's an oiler. Just a lovely sounding truck, eh? So uh, I do got mufflers here, you know. Just raise it up and oil it close it down and these brass ones are really nice uh, one big one here that says Stauffer system never heard of that we've got a big old one here that's just a cap that had something in it but I guess you could stick a rag in there and just keep the oil in the rag and let it seep out of it these are nice and then we got a pulley probably off of uh, this governor which we can save it. We can always use that stuff. All right, folks, so our portable boiler that I showed, uh, finally got it, well, I got an engine on it. Uh, stuck an engine on it that just about can bolt it on. Uh, four bolts, you know, went through two's close but uh we could make it work and run a steam line to this thing and run it and of course i'll show you why we will do that here in a minute instead of uh firing this boiler but uh, i'm going to show you how do you test the thickness and you know the kinds of places that you want to test to make sure that it's uh up to par i mean if you're going to accidentally skip a few parts uh you know when you're when you're testing this thing the uh there's there's parts that it's better than miss than others in other words you know the lower end of this thing is going to be where the most rust is where the thinnest parts would be uh, that's where you would have the biggest issue and i'll show you another thing on this particular one but the engine that we put on it so it was on this skid and it actually wasn't mounted or anything because uh when uh my buddy went to pick it up for me up in pennsylvania he lives up there but he went to pick it up to take it to his place and when he picked it up it actually fell off the skid so uh 
the skid no good the uh the engine is the struthers well company engine so it's not made for a portable but it looks fine on there and that's all we're really going for on this like i said we can run a steam line to it and run it so it's not a big deal but i still have to do the uh babbits in the rear of this thing besides that this is a really good running engine so uh anyway i'm gonna get at it here and show you how you uh you test the thickness on these things and then uh show you what we found and and uh we'll go from there all right all right folks just want to show you this is a ultrasonic thickness tester and uh it works really well and what i use is wheel bearing grease because if you use the stuff that's made for it you got to buy it and it's expensive way way more costly than doing this so we'll give you just an idea of how it works we got a a test plate here and uh, we can check the thickness of it and then uh, we've got it set up already for for steel and uh, get a little grease out put a little grease you actually do it on the end of it and then test it 4.16 millimeters so that's 4.16 millimeters thick so what you do then is you test it and make sure that you know it's right which it is and uh, there's a double test one 4.16 now you can calibrate it it's not a big deal too so uh, but it'll record memory if you need to so what you would do then Let's see, and you can see where there's spots all over this thing where I've been testing. And uh, of course, you know, the lower section is what you're gonna test first. And then uh, places where stuff would sit in. So we can probably just test right there where this has already got grease at and we'll check the thickness on that. Yeah, so 11.17 millimeters. 10 millimeters is right around 3.8, so that's probably around you know seven sixteenths or getting up there closer to seven sixteenths, eleven millimeter and uh, yeah because eleven and seven sixteenths wrench are about the same size so so yeah seven sixteenths on the ends uh, we've tested everything couldn't find any issues with that uh, let me see we'll go up a little higher so that was eleven eighteen okay eleven fifty two fifty three. You see how the thickness changed. It got a little thicker up higher, so, which it usually does. Right. We'll test right here above the handhold. Or we'll try to, the rougher the surface, the harder time we have. All right, there's 11. Yeah. Let me get right. That's me moving here. Come on. yeah so it's over 11. so anyway no problems there so we'll get up under and check it a few other places here real quick now we'll do a, also do a little walk around you know this is a lapsing boiler so as you can see they lap it over itself and then double rivet it uh, a lot of people don't like that i mean that's the early style and uh the other would be a, a butt strap which that means that these two plates as they come together would butt up to each other and then you'd have a wide strap over top of that with a, you know probably four rows of rivets and that would be a butt strap now I'm going to show you what the problem is with a lap seam and especially when the lap seam is on bottom uh, that's even worse that's not where you would want it at and uh, I guess it makes it look better because it's not on the side or it's not interfering on the top with any kind of mounts or anything like that but your problem is going to be where water and dirt sits uh, in a row basically at the end of this sheet when it goes around it'll be sitting right here and that's going to be the problem okay so let's take a look at the back side of this boiler uh, no doors I do have all the handholds uh, just wanted to show you 
like from here to here was the sight glass and then here's your lower this is a gravity style lower uh, pec uh tricock and here's a upper tricock but i mean it's still called a tricock even if you only have two uh so it'd be a, a two cock i guess but anyway so this has got a steam dome and that's the reason that the water is so high on in the boiler uh the dome is where all the steam is made and uh and i don't know if there's an advantage or disadvantage to a dome but uh, I do know when there's an explosion and I've read a lot of articles on newspaper articles from uh, late 1800s well mid to late 1800s all the way up through the early 1900s of steam boiler explosions and you know studying on it wanting to know why they done it and what happened you know the reasons behind it because most of them are are investigated so you know, even if they're not professionally investigated you know somebody says what they think it is anyway so uh, and of course most of them is uh, water getting low and you don't really have too many you don't have too many mechanical failures when it comes to something you know especially back then because the stuff was about new and most all of it was built right and what you had was people that was uh if you let your water level get below the crown sheet which is the sheet up inside here at the top if you let it get below it and it turns red and then you inject water in it you're gonna have an instant explosion so it's gonna bust it so uh, but they usually find the steam domes a long ways away from the uh, the explosions that's one of the things that sometimes they never find uh, in the articles that I have read okay folks so I'm gonna show you where our problem is at where we are run into the problem at so as you can see there's a few rivets that's rusted a little here in the bottom uh, they may have been okay. I didn't take a hammer and start hitting them like like I would do if I was worried about it, you know, if I was going to test it because I was, you know, one thing at a time. And this thing has been sitting open for a long time. So God knows what got in it. And one of the worst things you can have in anything, if you don't want it to rust, is any kind of animal that urinates, beats it up. So we're going to get a flashlight here real quick. And we'll shine the light down in there. Maybe, maybe be able to. We'll shine the light down in there. Maybe we'll be able to see something. I don't know. Uh, you can see some uh, leaves and such down there. I've seen a picture of these, one of these one time. Had a snake laying in it, but uh, but it's pretty rough. There's a lot of stuff there. So you can see what I was talking about. Uh, I cleaned that line off a little bit, and. Let me get a pointer and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, we don't have a very good budget around here, so uh, our pointer is a stick. So, as you can see, this is the lap where this right side comes into the left, but there's a big ledge right here. So what you gotta worry about is stuff sitting in this ledge. And if it sits in the ledge and then, uh, yeah sits in that ledge and it goes to rusting or if you know animal urinates in there that's where it's going to sit in that little lip so that's where we got to take a real good test of and to do that we want to go up under get my light turned off so i don't run my batteries dead okay so laying down looking up there's our same this is where we want to be testing so right on this side is where this one lays over and stops so I'm going to show you what the thickness is here this is really not a one person job but we're going to one person going to try to do it anyway alright first we're going to test right out here and we've got a 8.98 8.97 8 somewhere around there which is not terrible we'll come into right here now we only moved about inch and a half in and 3.67 that's less than four mill millimeters again we'll move it here 3.38 so basically what this comes down to is we've got a line right down through here that is thin 
Okay, folks, I see the bad spots now. I took a brush and tried to clean it out some. I'm hoping I can get in there and show you the pits. I don't know if you can see them or not on there. There is some deep, really, really deep pits down close to the edge there. Try it again. Oh, there you go. I know you can see them now. All right, so there's our pits, as you can see, shining in there. If they had not put that lap at the bottom, if they would have put it on the side, it would probably be all right, but, you know, it's bad back through there. It's really thin, so that's just, uh, it's just too far. You know, there's nothing we can do about it. Okay, so it's not a big deal. It's not an issue. Uh, you know, it was got, it was, we got it as yard art anyway. So, I mean, it wasn't, uh, it's not a big shock to us that it's uh, not ever going to be fired. Uh, it's a neat piece. It's actually a pretty rare piece. It's an Enterprise. I wish they had the engine on it. They probably took the engine off because the boiler was no good and uh, just kept the engine. And uh, and then again, they might have tore it down to restore it or something and just never put it back together. And uh, it pitted after that. But uh, that's the way it goes. But uh, always learning. And, you know, that's why you don't just grab a boiler and throw a fire in it and throw wood or throw water in it now we can put water in it we can build a fire in it we just can't do the both of them at the same time so we can uh run a pipe up because i like running this engine so we'll probably run a pipe to it and still run it uh, maybe even a, a flexible hose or something steam hose steam line something and uh maybe even clean it up and paint it a little bit or something but uh, my wife really likes it because she just likes she likes traction engines with wheels on them and stuff, and I'm more into stationary, but these things here got too many miles on them. But, all right. Appreciate everybody watching. Till next time. Bye.